everyone, I'm Cheryl and welcome to the Sewing Room channel. Aren't these cute? They're little fabric bowl covers. Now these are small bowls, but you can make them for any size bowl that you want. You probably would never need more than a fat quarter for a large bowl. A fat quarter could probably make at least two of these smaller bowls. So the amount of fabric you're gonna need really depends on how big your bowl is. On this bowl, I just used rickrack, okay, real easy. On this bowl, little pom-pom fringe, and then this bowl over here, bias tape. So you can buy all of these at a fabric and craft store. I bought all of my trims at Walmart. It's considerably less money there. So the only other thing you're gonna need is quarter inch wide elastic. So let's get started. This is the back side of the bowl cover. And I used a zigzag stitch to uh, hold the elastic down. And then on this rickrack, when I cut the fabric, I left the fabric just a raw edge. And I put the rickrack to where it was just hanging over the raw edge just a little bit, used a zigzag stitch to uh, stitch it down, and that zigzag stitch also binds the raw edge. Here's the one with the pom-pom fringe. The elastic was put on the same way. And the pom-pom fringe, the band of it that holds the pom-poms is right up against that raw edge. And again, I used a zigzag stitch. So when you do the zigzag stitch, it also binds the raw edge of your fabric. Here's the one with the bias tape. Again, the elastic is stitched on with a zigzag stitch. And I'm gonna show you how to do the elastic in a moment. But the bias tape is really easy to put on. It just folds around the edge. So the demonstration I'm gonna do on for this video is how to make this particular one because you don't really need to sit and watch me sew the trim on the other edges. It's pretty self-explanatory. So let me show you how to cut out your fabric. Measure the diameter. That's the distance across the center, the diameter of your bowl. You can use a tape measure or this ruler. This particular bowl is just slightly under six inches across but I want two inches of fabric to be out past the edges. So I'm gonna move my ruler out. So I got two inches over here and about two inches over here. So the diameter I'm gonna deal with to cut the fabric is 10 inches. So for this one, I need a piece of fabric that it's a little bit larger than 10 inches. So I'm gonna fold it in half like that, and then I'm gonna fold it again in half. Now, 10 inches is my diameter that I'm working with. You wanna divide that in half, which is five for this particular one. So whatever your diameter is, divide it in half, and which is gonna be five, as I said. So I'm gonna place the corner of my ruler here and I'm gonna go out here to this edge over here, and I'm gonna just put a little mark there at the five inch. Then I'm gonna move it a little bit and continue putting a mark. I'm gonna go all the way over to the other side. And what we're doing is this is our cutting line. And one more mark. And then, I like using a rotary cutter because it's easier for me. And I'm just going to cut on these little lines. It doesn't have to be an absolute perfect cut because your trim is gonna cover any little jagged edges that you might have. And then unfold it. Now to put on the bias tape, Let's take a really close look at bias tape. So here it is, right here. Now when you see bias tape folded, 
I mean, get it open. You're going to see that it's folded several times. So the raw edges are brought into the center and then they're pressed and then it's folded again and pressed. Most of your bias tape, I'm going to put my glasses on because I can't see. Most of your bias tape has one side is not quite pulled all the way over to the other edge. And it needs to be like that because when we wrap it around the edge here, I'm going to put it in there. So bear with me while I get this open. I'm going to push it in and wrap it over because this edge is not as wide as the edge is on the bottom. When we stitch close to the edge here, that needle will catch this edge over here. So it's purposely folded and pressed like that. So what I want to do is I'm just going to go ahead and get it started. And I'm just going to put a pin here like this. So when you begin stitching, you uh, don't want to start right at the end. You want to come in about three or four inches and begin stitching. And when you do this, you want to get your needle set down in there, do a, a couple of a back stitches. You don't need to do a lot. And you're going to only maybe stitch about an inch, inch and a half, and then you're going to wrap it around, stitch a little bit more, and wrap it around. And so we're going to go to my sewing machine now where I'm going to show you how to position all of this while you're stitching it down. So I've already lowered my needle down in through the edge of the bias tape. So you're going to stitch close to this edge right here. Remember, the shorter side of the bias tape is on top. So I'm just going to stitch a little bit. And remember, you're on a curve. So you don't want to stitch too fast. A second, I couldn't find my foot pedal. There we go. So I'm going to stitch a little bit more. Then I'm going to open up the bias tape, turn the fabric just a little bit. You don't want to stitch too far, about an inch. And then open it up and stitch it down. Now you want to go ahead and continue all the way around. So after you've stitched all the way around, you want to stop right about here. See where I started, where the end of the bias tape is over here? You want to stop stitching right about here because we want to be able to cut the excess bias tape off. And then I'll show you how to put the ends together. All right, so I'm almost back where I started. So I took it out of the machine and I'm going to overlap the bias tape. Then I'm going to overlap it by a little more than a quarter of an inch. And if it's a little too long, it's, you can always take more off, but it's hard to add it back on. So take it like that. And now you want to take one of the sides and you're going to put it back side down where all the folds are at. You're going to open up those folds and bring it down. And I need to recut this because you want to make sure this is cut. Then you want to fold this over like this. Okay. And then unfold this side of the bias tape. And then you're going to bring them on top of each other. Remember, get it all unfolded. Then you're going to stitch a quarter inch seam right across there. So now you want to finger press this seam open and fold it back to where it originally was. And then go ahead and wrap it back around the edges and finish stitching it down. Now you want the back side of your fabric up and you're going to put a ruler and here's the uh, beginning of my ruler right here. And I want to go in one inch. And I love these little seam gauges because it has it, this little, little dip in there so I know where to mark. So you're going to go around the whole inside and just put little marks. 
don't have to be perfect, beautiful marks. They don't have to be super close together. Just It's just to help guide that elastic around. So go ahead and do your marks all the way around. Here's my mark. So I'm gonna lay my elastic right on top of that mark. And I'm going to put it in underneath my presser foot. Now I've set it to a zigzag stitch and I changed the width to 7.0 and my length is 1.0. And I'm gonna go ahead and do a few stitches, just a few, because I wanna get the elastic anchored down. All right, so now that I've got it anchored, and if you have the option on your machine for your needle to always land in the down position through your fabric, select that because you don't want it to keep popping up on you. You want that needle down all the time when, you're, when you, it's stopped. So now, place your one hand behind your fabric, stretch the elastic, and here's my next little mark. So I'm stretching the elastic, pressing down, and I'm gonna stitch that zigzag stitch. Now remember, you need to hold on to both ends. So now, I'm gonna stretch it again, and make sure your hand is behind your fabric, and stitch. So you wanna stretch, pull the fabric, and stitch. And again, stretch, pull your fabric. If you don't pull the fabric from the back, it's gonna bunch up under your presser foot, and then you're gonna have a big lump to go through. So make sure you're pulling on it from both ends here. And you wanna keep going around, and then once you get to the end, you're going to overlap the elastic a little bit and then cut the excess off. So here's where I started, there's the end. I'm gonna tape my end of the elastic, I'm still gonna pull on it, and I'm gonna stitch right over that end. And I'm gonna go just a little bit more. Now I'm gonna cut this excess off and finish stitching it down. When you're doing either the pom-pom fringe or the rickrack, when you finish the ends off, in other words, you're bringing the two ends together, all I did was just overlap them and finished zigzag stitching and cutting the excess off. That's all you really need to do. As long as it's zigzagged down, it's not going to come apart. I hope you enjoyed this video tutorial. If you're looking for other holiday tutorials to do for either the Thanksgiving season or Christmas season, then check below your YouTube screen for those video links. I have many different tutorials on holiday table runners, pot holders, towels, etc. you name it. I have it. Now don't forget to follow me on Instagram and make sure you go and check out my Facebook page. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time and happy sewing. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please click on the thumbs up button and don't forget to click on share to share this video with your friends. If you haven't subscribed yet, click on that red subscribe button down there in the lower right hand corner of your screen. Click on the bell so you can receive notifications about my latest videos. I'm Cheryl and this is Scotty and this is Manny. See you next time and happy sewing.